So, what the fuck is AMD's Arcturus GPU all about then? This is a question we've been wrestling with off and on for the past year or so, since an AMD bod popped up on the Pharonix forums talking about this new Arcturus codename the company was using for open source driver updates. And how come it's come up again then? Well, AMD has this week released some of those new open source driver updates, and they feature Arcturus support with a few tantalizing teasers about what this new Radeon silicon could be. Is this the next-gen GPU architecture to follow Navi? Is this the ray tracing processor that's going to bring the holy grail of graphics to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Scarlet? Did we finally have the answer to the Arcturus riddle? No, but it's fun to speculate, right? Yeah, could be anything. Before we go into all the things that it could be, let's go back to the start. As we've already said, the first mention came on a Pharonix forum where John Bridgman from AMD took to the webs to announce that we're going back to real code names where possible and trying to keep the old, the name vaguely suggests the hardware generation so it will be easier to remember in the future, model. The first new code name should be Arcturus. This set of a whole internet's worth of stories jumping on Arcturus being the code name of the next generation of Radeon graphics architectures which meant Bridgman then had to edit his forum post and jump onto RAMD to explain that he wasn't actually referring to a new architecture, but that the codename instead was for a specific chip. Just to be clear, he writes, these codenames are per chip, not per generation, and are what we will use when pushing open source code to public repositories. Arcturus is just the first GPU we started after going back to using codenames in the driver that are completely unrelated to the marketing name. And this month, AMD started pushing open source code to public repositories, and listed three distinct PCI device IDs with Arcturus GLXL chips. In a separate code update, AMD also has an entry that talks about VCRAT, GPU cache, and how that relates to the number of compute units in place in a GPU. And then says, for Arcturus, CU, compute unit, number has been increased from 64 to 128. We know from earlier compiler code updates that Arcturus is based on the 7 nanometer Vega Arcturus architecture, but this could mean we're talking about a big old Vega GPU with up to 128 compute units inside it. That's a pretty spectacular 8192 potential GCN cores. I mean, I know the Vega cores, but still, damn. Previous code also reports that the Arcturus silicon contains no 3D engine, using all that Vega GCN power for straight number crunching and not pixel pushing. AMD has said that, despite Navi being the latest GPU architecture, it's a gaming-focused design and that the Vega and graphics core Next are still going to be used in the compute space. So again I say, what the fuck is AMD's new Arcturus GPU? Jacob and I have put our thinking caps on, they're water-cooled and filled with thermal grease to keep our fevered brains cool, and we've come up with some ideas. Nvidia has dedicated hardware for real-time ray tracing calculations. AMD does not. So my thinking is that this is some sort of dedicated ASIC or application-specific integrated circuit Very for good. pure ray tracing calculations. A core-happy slice of 7 nanometer Vega silicon that can sit alongside a standard 3D-capable graphics chip and crunch the numbers so AMD can deliver DXR-based lighting effects for PC and consoles. Maybe. That's not impossible. Ray tracing is a compute problem and the graphics core Next Tech is much more compute-centric than the newer RDNA design. But uh, 8192 core GPU alongside the standard PS5 and Xbox Scarlet Navi Zen 2 APU? That's hard to believe. And a ray tracing add-in card for PCs? Yeah, it's even more unlikely. Fair. Around the launch of Navi, AMD was at pains to explain that while the RX 5700 XT and RX 5700 cards wouldn't have any form of hardware-based ray tracing acceleration themselves, the second-gen RDNA chips will do. Eventually. But its long-term ray tracing vision, as set out by AMD's David Wang, is all about getting full scene ray tracing leveraging cloud computing, running as the eventual goal. So could Arcturus be that gold made flesh? Silicon? Silicon? Mm. No, no, it's, it's a bit early for that. The compute-centric and potentially multi-GPU nature of what Arcturus seems to be could play well with the potential of having the cloud work at rendering extra lighting effects for games, but we're a long way from having the infrastructure or super low latency for that sort of computing to be done on the fly, in the cloud, and seamlessly filtered into your games. So yeah, no, no, not. Those hipster Apple types have got some new dual-core GPUs, right? So it's probably that. Apple likes to have proprietary shiz that it can jealously hoard, so maybe Arcturus is the name AMD has proffered for its version of the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo. 
That's got up to 128 CUs across a pair of Infinity Fabric Link GPUs and is all about the compute. All about the compute. But Arturus seems to reference a single GPU with 128 CUs inside of it. And the Radeon Pro Duo needs to have a 3D engine in it too, because even though Apple hates gaming, those polo neck jumpers really get in the way of a good gaming headset, it still needs to be able to display its software somewhere. Well, that and the PCI device IDs for Arcturus are very different from standard Vega 20 GPUs. We know that Google Stadia streaming service is using AMD GPUs in its back end. We know that currently those GPUs are Vega based. The existing silicon is supposedly heavily based on the RX Vega 56. Maybe the Arcturus GPUs represent a potential upgrade of Stadia's GPU resources ahead of its launch this year. There are also potential references for Arcturus and XGMI or Interchip Global Memory Interconnect within the new Linux code. XGMI is AMD's kind of NVLink analog and could be used to connect multiple Arcturus GPUs together to form the sort of instance graphics pools Google has been touting as the way Stadia will cope with demands of super smooth 4K gaming on its system and for future games too. But again we go back to the lack of a 3D engine mm. on these chips. So while the compute stuff could be done on Arcturus with those graphics pools, it would need to go through another actual GPU to spit out some visuals that would only add in unwelcome latency. So. I ain't for Stadia. Frontier will feature custom CPU and GPU technology from AMD and represents the latest achievement on a long list of technology innovations, said AMD's Forrest Norod at the announcement of its goal of creating the world's most powerful supercomputer in 2021. Yeah, alongside Prey and the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, AMD is creating the custom CPUs and GPUs that will go into the Frontier supercomputer. And maybe the extremely high core count Arcturus GPUs with their compute focus and lack of a 3D engine would make for the perfect fit with a big old 7,300 foot machine. Certainly sticking 8,192 GCN cores on a 7 nanometer diet would save space, as opposed to having a pair of GPUs, so it does kind of make some sense. As does its potential support for XGMI 2. It's going to need an awful lot of these GPUs inside it to be able to offer the performance of the top 160 fastest supercomputers in the world combined. After all. Honestly, this is probably our best guess for what the Arcturus chips are here for. Some kind of supercomputer Radeon Instinct shizzle. Well, those are our considerations for what AMD's Arcturus could actually be, but if you've got any other thoughts or speculative technical expertise you wish to impart, feel free to let us know in the comments below. As you can probably tell, we don't really have a clue. No, I haven't got a clue, really. So thanks for watching, it's been lovely to have you here. Give us some like and subscribe type interaction if you've appreciated what you've seen, and come see us again next time. Bye!